Who are these people? Uh, so <laughs> to get more detail about what had transpired here this last Friday and to get more of an understanding of events, uh, we have the man himself, uh, Jose Vega. You might know him. Um, from calling uh, Nancy Pelosi an old, uh, sad drunk to her face. Uh, but here he is. Uh, welcome, Jose. How you doing? Hi, man. Thank you for joining us. How was, that was your uh, Memorial Day? Uh, it was good. You know, I spent it here at home. What better way to spend it? Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. No, we, we got to rock this four-day week, this like, three-day weekend. Like, the Japan's already doing it with the, with the four-day work week. Um, but yeah. I really like we, we really wanted to get you on because we wanted to. I mean, I I came close to coming to this. I mean, this was, I, I, this was like a, a a mixed day in my head that I thought it was on a Saturday, but I just got out of work when this happened. But um, I, I know I talked to Lucy a little bit about uh, this, who was also banned uh, from entry, and I just wanted to ask you directly. I wanted to uh, hear and like just like for the clip and for the audience here just to. Uh, describe briefly, you know, why, um, you know, what you do, uh, why you showed up here and, uh, you know, ultimately what it transpired. Uh, well, the, uh, we knew that the AOC town hall was going to happen for quite some time. And we knew generally where in what neighborhood, in what neighborhood of New York, they, I guess they kind of beefed up their security since last time, not making it. And, um, I was a little surprised with um, what put up, but when I saw what actually transpired, I saw that not a lot of those people were actually there to see, you know, had probably had some support, but a lot of it, it was uh, not to give a shout out to the ladies who brought up that an actual something criminal was, was pretty, um, and an official criminal, I think that was a sign that they had, but um uh, well, I had like um, three other people other than kind of and myself go uh, because we kind of figured like something was going to happen. Either we were going to be born immediately or they they'd put us somewhere where we can't be heard or they could easily back. Because before Congressman Espayat had recognized kind of and I back and they let us in and he just gave us a special shout out and said it might get loud so you know and uh, uh it was either january or february that, that happened but it was okay and uh but this one no they just they just barred us from coming in and i think you, I think you can see in that, that do you have experience with this before has this ever happened to any sort of public event with where constituents were invited i mean no I mean, also for children, but kind of it. It's kind of is a constituent. And that's also not to say they didn't let non constituents and they didn't first. And then all the non I mean, it's not, it's not like it's a paid event. You know what I mean? It's different from like a private, like hosted event. Like this is a town. When you say it's, I mean, a, it's town a town hall, hall it's supposed to be open to everybody, right? Yeah, you're that's supposed to when, you when, you, when you're calling it a town hall, that's automatically you're, you're addressing your voters, right? Or at least you're supposed to. Well, even um, if you're a con congressperson all the decisions you make affect all americans it is that like right any congressman should take any citizen who comes to their office if they were a constituent you know um and deal with, with their problems i mean you know for example in the midwest are just absolutely getting wrecked right now and it's just as bad now as it was in the 80s you know what's a congressman in new york going to do a whole hell of a lot for them and that's what if if I was a congressman, them and, and uh, but 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 anyway, yeah, no, this was the, the same thing much that Jamal Bull leverages she has too. Yeah, exactly, you know? right? Like, well, that, that's also why I was really proud about who I posted on my. And also, Colin got got her afterwards uh, in the interviews that he, he did. She was the one who was talking about Thomas Sowell Sol and stuff. We're still working. Her, she's <laughs> um, okay. but, but wait, you knew, but, wait, you knew that you knew her. I was the one who, uh, oh, well, she got told by someone else in my crew about the event, but I was the one who told her about the ask AOC why not 
not use her and the squad's influence to withhold their vote on Vitus, uh, he ends the war, right? And um, my idea to tell her to do that was because I wanted other people to kind of go with that idea, go with that. Yeah, why not withhold your endorsement unless he, he concedes on Medicare for all or this student debt loan, right? Like that, that's not a hard thing to do, but see, it's also a scary thing to do. Jamal, the congressman, gutless cowards. But if he even considered the idea of unless he, you know, concedes on something, they that will bring he will know what 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 fear is. He probably um, has been slapped metaphorically and figuratively, of course, for, for you know not going with the part. Of, um, you know, so uh, basically, my point is, it's like these, these people are coward, except us. You know, we're we're the we're the we have the moral high ground. We are the ones who, and it's not our, our fault. It's the Republican fault. It's like really, you're doing everything you can. Yeah. No bullshit, right? I think AOC kind of deserves this treatment because, I mean, in our mind, in my mind at least, I thought of of the U.S. You know, like because Claire Daly and Mick Wallace are just two EU thing done in the pragmatic sense. Like they're they're only two votes and fascism, but we respect them because they speak the truth and they they actually fight they they. Mm-hmm. They say what they think, right? And like that's why we respect Claire Daly and Mick Wallace. They're only two, two votes out of like whatever how many, many seats is made up of the European Parliament. It could be just AOC, right? Like if she had forced a floor vote for the Medicare for all, and people didn't vote, at least you fought for us. At least you, you know, show that you actually care about us. And then it's a new system. We're going to replace the Congress. It's that simple. We could probably make the assumption that there's like a list somewhere where AOC's Lucy, team just like oh. doesn't allow anybody in. <laughs> well, Lucy, yeah, like, how did she away. get in? How like why was she, why was she like how? Because I'm assuming like she was with your group. So like, how did she? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, like, I don't want to give the the sauce away, but there really isn't much okay. to give away. The thing is, is that they're all New Yorkers. Like that's that's it, right? right? Right. Everybody who came and like I said, AOC at first was allowing only constituents to come in, and then if there was room, then you all the non constituents come in. So all the non constituents were able to come in. So all of my friends were non constituents. The only constituent in my yeah. group was Kynan, and he's the only one barred. And like I'm happy to say, like we have constituents who have been recruited who you know, can, like, go in now, whose faces and names they will never know until it actually happens. So, you know, AOC can suck it. Um, I didn't know that they could do that stuff at town halls and just be like, nope, if you're not a constituent, you can't be here. Like, make all these guidelines. Like, just... Honestly, there probably is a lawsuit that could happen. I ain't the kind of guy who has money like that to just... Start. DNC. If there's some... I get that. And it's a DNC, right? So they'll like bankrupt me and they'll drag it out, you know, as long as they can. Maybe yeah. I'll have some That's victory. That's what happened when after the New York Times. They fucked, just, they like, like yeah. it's just it, when when they represent the they're supposed like it's like you hear that argument on on Twitter or on the internet where people are like, well, what are you to complain? You don't vote for it. it's like like you said, Jose. She is responsible for voting for these things that impact every single person in the country. She should be held at like to the accountable by everybody. So yeah. like, yeah, especially when, especially when they have like you know certain like forms of leverage, but like during times like force the vote and uh, times that they can use it like uh, for or if like they want to fund I mean, capital. There's plenty. Of, there's plenty of things want, where most um, of the stuff that they do at her level impacts people across the entire country. It's not just people in her district. So, well, yeah. you know, I like. In the beginning of her career, in terms of being a congresswoman, and she got rid of Joe Crowley, I think mm-hmm. everybody on the left saw that as like a, a shining example of something that can come as good. Because she was being interviewed by Glenn Greenwald. She was talking about how she wouldn't vote for Nancy Pelosi as Speaker of the House unless the 
yeah. Ba, she was saying, yeah, we're going to free Assange. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. We're going to bring, like, we're going to cause a ruckus. And the most, the thing that bothers me the most is that she said, I'm ready to be a one term congresswoman. Yeah. I was the, just what I was yeah. thinking. The one term congresswoman thing is like, Here it is, the thing that me. and the thing is, like, it's not a secret what happened. So in the beginning, yes, Republicans were going after her. She was saying some things that were dumb on interviews. She couldn't answer questions. I mean, yes, you know, that that's what happens, right? You're 28 years old. You really don't know the answer to a lot of questions. Okay, fine. Right. And so the Republicans were kind of poking fun at her. And that was the start of when Republicans were getting poking fun at her. But, you know, that that Iron Dome funding was terrible and she was mm-hmm. crying about it. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, the fact that she voted to send money and weapons to Ukraine, despite the fact that she's supposed to be this progressive socialist who is supposed to be anti-war and here she is playing right into the hands of the military industrial complex like well yeah um, she had that thing that thing last month or was it like less than a month ago where she did like the recruitment drive the military like, recruitment yeah. event yeah we, we had so we, sad uh, yeah we we actually got in touch with the uh, the bronx uh anti-war uh, i i know richie a little bit so i was talking to him a little bit <laughs> yeah i was i was at that that was that was fun they wouldn't let they wouldn't let us in well they wouldn't let anyone in there that that was they were just like okay maybe they just wanted students all right fine whatever um but they weren't but, even letting parents in from our understanding like yeah it's crazy <laughs> But uh, yeah, no. So um, what was I saying? Uh, you know, the thing is, the Democratic Party is like trying to say, I'm going to reform the mafia from the inside out. Mm-hmm. The only way that could ever happen is like, I don't know if you, I don't know if it can. Honestly, I don't think it can. Like RFK it would, seems to think so. Well, I like <laughs> RFK. I just wish it's he wasn't. CIA is good, I just right? wish he wasn't running as a Democrat. Otherwise, like, I I agree with like 90, 85, that's what, yeah, that's what Jimmy 80, said. maybe seventy five percent of what he says. I don't know that Israel thing really kind of like threw me off, but um, <laughs> but but yeah. but um, when you get into that position of authority and power, and you are somebody who like. Yeah, but this is a this is a problem for all of us that all of us need to consider, because we are all passionate about what we want to do. We are all passionate about like, yeah, this is wrong and this is wrong, this is wrong. That's the easy part. What are you prepared to actually do? Because I don't think any of us really understand what that means until you're actually in the seat that AOC is in. When, oh damn. Now I'm actually in the belly of the beast and people don't consider what that actually means. And so what happens is you just get swallowed up by it. What I mean by that is like she was probably talked to or told, listen, you know, you're out of your league. You really don't know what you're doing here. I'll help you out. And that's where it starts. Well, you have to make moral concessions in order to actually stay in that power. You have to decide like, you know what? I have to, everything I thought I knew about principle and what I thought I was going to do, out if I want to survive here and make it here. It, it also bothers me when people, or at least like, you know, either shit libs or liberals kind of whitewash AOC as like sort of like a mistaken project, like as if she has good intentions, but uh, she's just making all the wrong decisions and making terrible mistakes. I mean, this is the same woman who was, you know, pushing congressional pay raises for like years. Um, th- like this is not like this shouldn't come as a surprise if it's like in, in, in the corruption type of relationship sense. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, like it wouldn't surprise me. I. And it shouldn't. I do think that there was a time because I don't think anybody goes into government thinking I'm going to be evil and corrupt. I don't think anyone ever starts that way. You become that way. And really, I, really, I, I do think so. I, I, mean, I, I think I, I think it's like kind of like I do think people are like, like going to like it knowing that they can be like corrupt as fuck. Not I, maybe not corrupt, but I think you need to be like a little bit of an egoist to have to have to to want to run. I feel like. Maybe okay. I think there's like some yeah, sense that's to that. putting it politely, I guess. Maybe yeah. I, I mean, I happen to think you need a lot of government. Like I, you know, I I'm a true lefty in that sense, right? I I think you need a lot more government. I do think you need stuff like Medicare for all. 
I think you need a centralized, um, uh, excuse me, you need a national bank. I think you need to go back to what mm -hmm. Hamilton was envisioning. I do believe in like, you know, a top down government approach to things. And so what you need for that to happen is people you can trust in those positions to do it. Otherwise, it doesn't work. Otherwise, you get what you have now which is just like fascism to, to be quite honest and that's it it's just fascism and it's been this way since yes. kennedy was assassinated so you know i mean like for example if i decided to run would you guys think i'm corrupt and evil i'm sure a lot of people well so and this is this is like this is like the kind of the kind of like question about rfk is like true intentions like if he knows the game within dnc why wouldn't he have run independent from the start and like it's just at some point you have to ask yourself, like, do you go into the DNC? Like I can give, there was a time where I would give AOC more of the benefit of the doubt. And I could see like, maybe she went into it with good intentions, but like, it didn't take long for them to be like, look at all this money. Look at all this opportunity. Look, you want to go to the Met Gala? Oh, I bet that would be cool. Wear this cool, cool dress. that says tax rich on it. Yeah, and like, all of a sudden stupid. she's just like raining in money and opportunity. And she's like, oh, I can make a career out of this. So, like, I think I, I want to say, like, despite all of that, I have tons of respect for independence. That's that's it's a really different. It's a that. different. I think it's a completely yeah, different ballgame. Totally I would thing. feel completely different about RFK. And I'm somebody who's like pretty against electoralism in general. If RFK had been like, you know what? After all the shit that I said about the what happened over the last three years, I'm going to kind of like stand behind my morals and run as an independent. I'd like be feeling differently about him. But like. It's kind of like what Kim Iverson said on her show, like with uh, yeah, with I trust you, but I don't trust the Democratic Party. Yeah, I agree. And like you know, uh, Brianna Gray Joy, who's like take sometimes I watch and stuff. Like she says, it's a good thing that there are people like Marianne Williamson and RFK Jr. running. And I think this is her position. I might be wrong, but that the reason it's good is because it'll actually force Biden to push to be pushed to the <laughs> left. left yeah right or like actually do <laughs> yeah. stuff that yeah. that he said he was going to do but i i think she's drawing the wrong conclusion from that all the only thing it's going to do is make him cheat harder like let's assume that marion ann williamson and rfk jr genuinely want to challenge Biden. let's just assume that right yeah yeah this okay we can play that is, mind game for a second <laughs> this is not going to be like joe biden like uh oh maybe i better give people medicare for all so uh, i don't lose it's Hmm. How do we break the DNC primary so that I stay in part in power more? Like, come on, you know they, they don't they don't so have well. your interest. They don't care about you. They could care less about you. You know, challenger is only going to make them cheat harder, not make them want to play play fair, play honest. So that's kind of yeah, that's kind of how I see it, unfortunately. So hopefully, hopefully, RFK will kind of speak more to that as as it becomes more and more obvious that Biden's the nominee. I did ask Q Sinich, who's his campaign manager, this last weekend up in um, Kingston, New York, where he held a rally. Mm -hmm. But it was a peace unity rally. It wasn't an RFK rally. It was a, it was like a generally anti-war rally. And Dennis Q Sinich was there, and I asked him, like, listen, like, can you really trust the primaries after what they did to Bernie? And do you even think our last election was fair? And we're on YouTube. Great right? questions. Yeah. Okay. Well, the elections were fair and honest, and anyone saying otherwise is a liar. Anyway, <laughs> so, no demonetizing for you. The elections were fair. Anyway. Um, <laughs> and so, he said, well, I, ran, uh, I, I didn't vote to certify the 2000 election. So, you know, election security is a very big deal, and uh, you'll see. We're working on something on, on that. It, elections have to be fair. And so, I was like, okay. Well, you know, I mean, I, I'm I want to see what what that comes up to. We'll see what that means. Well, it's like what we're, it's like with Dow with the same thing. Like the was he like, oh, this is a sinking ship, and I'm out. And it's because it's rigged from the start that there's like, what's really going on here? Yeah, so. exactly. I mean, I I don't I don't know what <laughs> Marianne Williamson is thinking or doing. I like I you know she's terrible on the Ukrainian war and like what is she? You know, she says we need to go back to an FDR style of economics, but like, I don't have any indication that she actually knows what that means because one of FDR's biggest things was we don't need to interfere in other countries. We don't need to. We need. We need to look beyond this age of imperialism. So, and she's over here saying actually Putin's like a thug and a war criminal. Yeah, just Our, crazy stuff. 
you know, and, the FDR and, framing is so fucking cringe because it, <laughs> it, 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 you're talking about a family whose foundation was funded by the British, like the British East India, India Company. And who's that? That's the company that funded all of the opium wars in China for years and pretty much demolished an entire society. Well, so, like, to say that, like, and, and Kennedy comes from a similar family. That's why, like, where, like, I share, like, my criticisms and that's, like, we kind of, like, jumped out, like, with our red flags out of way because, like, it's not just RFK. He's also, like, part of a dynasty. And that's, a like, a bigger deal than... Your, I have, your, I have your, a problem with that. Your, well. your criticisms are true and honest, but I would ask you to give FDR a second look. And I mean, Kennedy was far from perfect also, but FDR told Churchill, and this is also why Stalin thinks that Churchill killed FDR, but like in like 1944, 1945, he told Churchill, when this war is done, you're going to let go of India and you're going to let go of Africa because the age of empire and colonialism is over. It's done. And his wife helped founded the UN, which is completely useless today. But the idea of the UN was that there's a universal declaration of human rights. And I think his, the intention of his government is the reason why you have a lot of the infrastructure you still have today. Like a lot of New York City was built oh, around of course. FDR. Mm -hmm. yeah. And there's a lot of good things. Like but the I highway feel system? Like, um, that was more that, Eisenhower, that, but yeah, that would that did that still required some form of pressure and some you know like years of Great Depression uh, and like Union protests after uh, all the shit in the twenties. Um, FDR FDR at heart was a capitalist, but he did push. I mean, I'll, we can have this argument another time, but like either way. Um, like he, he 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 saved capitalism from itself, essentially. He delayed late stage capitalism another like one hundred years. Well, I, I don't um, know about that. Was, because it, he, was it a, like a drastic reformation of the system? Like, of course, and like that's why you know we're they're trying to gut like a lot of the benefits that like Social Security and retirement that we have today. Well, but see, that's um, the thing. Like he help pass the Glass-Steagall bill, which actually put restrictions on Wall Street and also on the banking. So it cut, it divided speculative banking versus commercial banking, which is what allowed the economy basically to recover. Um, not just that, but he also founded the Tennessee, Tennessee Valley Authority, which was responsible for many of the major infrastructure projects that have allowed people to live the way they do today. And when he ran for governor in New York, he ran on a single issue. He wanted to electrify New York, and he won on that on that um, on that platform because he wanted to bring electricity to like rural rural towns that only had like one or two farming families. And they said, "Well, what the hell? Why are we going to spend all this money in technology just to fund a couple farmers?" And he said, "Well, because you can give them refrigeration, and you can give them the ability to actually double and triple their crop resources." On top of that, he comes from a family called. Uh, there was a uh, one of his descendants is named Isaac Roosevelt who um, was a, I believe he studied Hamilton's economics, and FDR wrote his thesis on Hamilton. So a lot of the economics that FDR used came from both Hamilton and Henry Carey, who was Lincoln's economic advisor uh, during the Civil War. And that was what he used to help break us out of the Great Depression. I think FDR proved that what you needed to run an economy was not the money, but rather the physical elements behind an economy. So in other words, and also also to your point about the pressure, I mean, Caleb Maupin tells me this all the time. He never lets me get away with what I'm saying. Was like, <laughs> at the time, there were like 2 million card carrying communists or something like that. Right. And so he says that FDR was actually the most socialist president of our time. I don't know if I'd characterize it that way, but that's how Caleb Maupin does. The know. most socialist like, president of our time, ever. I could you could say that, yeah. But that's like that's like such a low bar. But yeah, that's like. To, well, like I always think of, of I always think of him as a compromise because I get it. I, I'm interested in hearing more about that. Like, yeah. I, like I'm open to more of like these like interpretations. Like, I want to hear more about. You're never uh, gonna find a perfect here. president. You will never find. <laughs> no, a perfect of course person. not. 
And I wanna I wanna point that out like about like people like Lenin and, and Stalin and, and even like Tito, like these these people, like like a lot of our leaders, like in our previous times, I feel like um I like I was told by someone like from like a different organization that like uh, different our leaders play a certain role in one period of our of time and they play another role in a different period of time. And so you can see like how these characters like morph over time. They they typically rule like for they like, have like or like have power for you know a relatively long period of time. So you can see like their your kind of character morph and evolve. It, it, but, it, and that's always that's always going to be true, like forever. Um, you know, there are periods in history where we revere people and then fifty years from now, who the hell knows what? People are gonna be like they, you know, they tried. They canceled Gandhi somehow. They, they did it. They did it. I don't know how they did it. They did it. Like because they dug up the fact that he was racist to Africans once. Like then they, then they, no, it was like a seriously. And then they tried to cancel King recently too, and like because he was cheating on his wife like a lot. Yep. And that's that's just true. But I think my point is is that if you look for a perfect example of somebody in history, you'll never find one. And the point isn't to look for one. You know why? Because we're all far from perfect, too. You know, I got my vices, too. I've said them very publicly. I got mommy issues, okay? Women dominate me. Like, <laughs> you know, go ahead. No, 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 no. <laughs> it's a joke. I get it. No, I get it. <laughs> it's a joke, but I do fall in love very fast, okay? So, you know, I get heartbroken a lot. You know, the CIA, you see, that's the thing, right? Maybe I got to go harder on what I'm doing because, like, <laughs> Maybe the CIA will send me a good girlfriend to get me out of politics, and that'll be my government mandated girlfriend right there. Like fucking, <laughs> fucking RFK Jr.'s son. <laughs> you think they're gonna keep her on the payroll for that? <laughs> they should. Like, <laughs> I'm okay. I'm like this a public salary. memo to the CIA. Mandated <laughs> <laughs> girlfriend, a nice oh woman. <laughs> Who's well read and wants to get me out of politics, but will take care of me forever? I'm out. No problem. I'm, you heard it here, folks. I'm out. <laughs> oh, geez, I'm ready I'm to up. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So no, but, to... but to just finish the point, yes, we are all very imperfect, and that's also why I think people should read Shakespeare because the tragedy aspect of it, like the reason why these things are so tra oftentimes, the reason why things end so badly is because of your own faults. Like, that's what it is. That's why, you know, Hamlet is such a tragedy. Like, people are on the verge of- We sort of project of, it onto ourselves, I feel like. Yeah, people are usually mm. on the verge of doing something great, but their own faults prevent them from seeing the action they need to take. And we see that all the time with Hubert. Like, for example, with the Rage Against the War Machine stuff. It was very <laughs> hard for me and for anyone to really figure out like how much of this is genuine opposition and hatred to it and how much of this is like actually influenced by outside sources whether it's like you know the cia or the fbi and that's just true for all of our circles in the left why because we have a lot of infighting in the left that's just a given that's just true how much of it is genuine how much of it is is influenced Actually, a lot of the ways that operations are worked by intelligence service today is not even an agent posing as like some influencer. The thing is they profile you because of the internet. All your shit is out there. All your messages, everything you've said is out there. They have a profile of you. They know how to manipulate what, what you're prideful about. They know how to manipulate what your weaknesses are, what your strengths are, what you care about, what you don't care about. They know how much debt you have. And that's how they manipulate you. That's how they get you to actually act. They do things to provoke you in ways that don't even seem like influenced from the outside. But it's like, was that? And, you know, that's not to build anybody, make anybody paranoid or something. You know, I, I, was, I, was, I was actually thinking about that with my, with like my last girlfriend. After the AOC thing. Um, it's true, though. It's true, though. No, like on a, <laughs> on a serious note, like after I did the original... This is like insider info, I guess. Like after the original AOC thing, I was pretty depressed. I was going like really, I was I was not in a good place mentally. Like October, November, December, and the beginning of January, I was mentally gone. My grandfather was dying. 
And I had this girlfriend at the time who I was like seeing every other day. That was like my coping mechanism. And the only person who helped me get through it, honestly, was kind of. And like that guy really like helped and pushed me out of, of whatever bullshit I was doing. But everything just seemed like so I didn't even know how to describe my circumstances. And that's that's like my point to you. It's like how much of the depression that I was feeling was a manipulation of my circumstances already. Because not only that, I had mysteriously lost a job that I had back then that I just didn't talk about. And that's how these kind of operations are done to the point where it's like, are they influenced by someone outside? Or is it just something that happens naturally that are just natural consequences of living? And the thing is, you can never know. And you're not supposed to know. That's how they get you. <laughs> That's how they get you. Exactly. <laughs> I had that thought too. Like, how much of but, like my personal life is manipulated? But see, by I saw dead I, sources. I saw a thing on on Rockfin. Max Blumenthal was interviewing somebody, and he's talking about how the UK has UK has a thing called nudge, where they kind of do that sort of thing. They just kind of influence you in very subtle ways to create habits, to where you're kind of almost doing it on a subconscious level. So we showed they, an article like, where the Pentagon was funding like, without Israeli a doubt, accounts. without a doubt, the government is in on trying to influence your behavior in these subtle ways. Like, look, without we a use doubt. the Internet 13 hours a day. Maybe some of us. <laughs> yeah, I don't fuck it. The moment I wake up, the first thing I do Most is of I, us are turning online. Yeah. yeah. Like the first thing I do is I check Twitter. Like, obviously, that has to be engineered. OK, the, just the act alone. It's program. Well, like and no. the pro the yeah. way that they're not they don't release like the notifications in real time. They come out and like burst to kind of like fuck with your head. Yeah. As well. yeah. So there's like all sorts of different ways that they get it to turn it into uh -huh. like an addictive behavior. So you have retired <laughs> intelligence officers who work in social media networks. <laughs> all of them. All of them. Right. All of them. Like, yeah. So question is like. Are we in a matrix? Like, is, is the internet the matrix? No, seriously. Like, these are questions we all gonna have to start asking pretty soon. Like, to what extent are is everything we believe, everything we think we know, manipulated by the internet, and how much of it is genuine? What if I'm a psyop? I don't. Know. <laughs> yeah. No, there is there is like a there is like a theoretical like not not even a theoretical. There is like a real matrix. It's not like in the same sense that like Andrew Tate wants you to believe, but it's purposely corp like cooperated and incorporated and manipulated in a way to influence or at least take like first and foremost yeah it's like getting blue pilled out. like just becoming like an npc and just sort of like you're plugged into a, what the like the yeah. cultural narrative and all that are crap. there like, different... i can tell you like getting into this stuff like you'll never go back there's no <laughs> there's no like you every time like as soon as you get deep into it there's no you can't unknow things like i can't like unknow that like my my government like blew up a, a, an energy pipeline <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> It's not like I can't like unknow that, or I can't like the I can't like unknow MK Ultra. There's no way you're gonna like erase that from my, your memory. Yeah. So it's just it's too late at this point. Quite a but, rabbit hole we've fallen into here. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. I I wanted to, <laughs> I wanted to show like this the original confrontation here. Oh yeah, 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 where, yeah. That guy. That guy. So this is the guy. A matrix. And I want to. I want to ask you, like, well, you know, like, what kind of like led up to this point? Like, how you think he identified you? But let's watch. It's a Mr. Smith there. Oh, yeah, if you want. Well, why can't you go in? I'm telling you, you can't go in. That's why. Why is that? Because I'm telling you, you can't go in. So he's not allowed in. Yes, he's not allowed in. Wow. Look at this guy. Dude, he's not sketch. Not, what is that pin, by the way? If somebody yeah. can tell me what that pin is, because I've seen that pin many times. I don't know. Is it just like Pentagon? <laughs> like, I, what disturbs so what, me like, is like not. It's not. It's not like the fact. Not even the fact that you couldn't get in. It was like uh, I, I hope Jose is still here. I'm here. But like, I'm here. Right. okay, yep. it was the fact. It was the fact that um, like he he said it so quietly and like maliciously, like 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 you're not getting in. It's like not like happening. It's not, like that's like straight fed. Like that's like Hi. it's just a disturbing. Tell he's not allowed in. Why? Not the reason. Tell he's not allowed in. So that's the reason. You want to hear? Hang out here. Thank you. 
It's just kind of ridiculous to me. They're not giving me any kind of reason whatsoever. They just escorted me out. I registered for this. I'm a constituent, and they're not allowing me in. That's Unfortunately, crazy. I don't believe. I do not personally. Don't expect that. With fucking, anything, fucking but, cops, like, um, defending <laughs> AOC. That's freaking sad. Your The own constituent was like, I got thrown out by these, like, boot, these shock troopers, these fucking people throwing me out. And the cops are just like, oh, democracy. <laughs> yeah, I think those guys, I think the guys with the pin are fed. I don't know what kind. I, 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 I think that's Capitol Police. That's what I, Do you I think. Do this guy's cop? And now, like, why, so like, what? Capital police. Was he was he originally able to enter, and then he was? So you're saying he was escorted out, but how far in did he get? He got up to. So the event was hosted on an auditorium in the second floor, but when you go into those doors behind him, you have to get. You know, they they have like metal detectors there to make sure you're not bringing in a weapon or something, and then so you walk through the thing, and then they escort you up to the second floor where they have actual registration tables and stuff. Fucking guy. And so as Kynan told me, he says, like, you know, because he, he did register. He, they just told him, uh, wait to the side for a second. And then, like, then they kicked him out. It's crazy. Wow. That's crazy. Okay. So, so you're, you, uh, you think possibly he identified his name? And then they, so it's, maybe it is a list of people that they keep. It's got to be. Yeah, exactly. A name, Dude, picture, they got, maybe. Yeah, footage. footage of people now. Like they just got. Well, like, do they? Yeah. Yeah, do they have pictures? Like, are are they exactly. aware of that this is being posted on social media? Like, sure, right? No, I know that for a fact because Kynan and I were recognized at an Espyot <laughs> event a while back in like February, and Espyot gave us a shout out. When I say he gave us a shout out, he called out Kynan's full name, which was like, it's Kynan Thistlethwaite. All right, he said it, Kynan Thistlethwaite, which was like, honestly, that's how you would if you didn't know how to say Thistlethwaite. That's how you would say it. Mm. Um, and so that means that they did their research. They know who the fuck we are. Right. And there's an APB out, you know, for all New York Democrats to, hey, watch out. Shitty, man. Yeah, and so it looks like this was... Um, Don't ask questions. Uh, we'll make a then. file of you. Oh, yeah. That's messed up. Another military recruitment. For, like, so. That's another <laughs> one? Um, yep. Oh, my God. Now it's just a thing. So she just and, normalized right, and it. And you were in line. It. Oh, yeah. This is Rachel Brown. Yeah, I, I wanted to play this as well. But, um, yeah, we'll, we'll play you provide some context. Wait, right? okay. So just say that. Repeat that again. I'm recording this now. So you <laughs> were at the event, right? And you were in line. And then tell me what you heard the security say. Uh, one of them said he was going to go downstairs and make sure that certain people – that uh, didn't come in that weren't supposed to and they said one of them said oh, yeah we already got one of them and then they said well did you did you see the other one they said yeah yeah he left too <laughs> <laughs> incredible okay, great yeah wait okay so just say that so it's a list it's, they have a list of people that who are who are, who are, are now barred from voicing any sort of opinion the, the whatsoever descent. Yeah, exactly. And like, I, I also want to say this publicly, like, yes, we have people who are going to go in there, but there were other people who were not with us that did it. Like, well, I don't know about the Cuban guy. The Cuban guy was not with me. He, the one who was like, shit, called her a piece of shit. I, I don't advocate for that. Back. I have that. I have that pulled up as well. I don't advocate for people calling congressmen pieces of shit. I'm sure other people feel differently. And yes, I've sworn at <laughs> congressmen before. So... <laughs> But that guy was not with us. I this respect is just the fact rant, that this is just, And I noticed, so there was like a couple of conservatives outside. So like those two, like the woman with the NYPD hat that Roger interviewed. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, did, did you know her too? No, just the, the one after the NYPD hat. So is it like common for like conservatives to like show up to these things and kind of... When Kynan and I did the original AOC town hall... The entire audience was me, Kynan, and then people who were supporting the opposition to her, the conservative challenger to her, Tina Forte. They were all heckling her on like stupid shit, like oh, immigration, uh, taxes. So let me get this straight. So like, if you if you criticize her from the, the right, <laughs> if you criticize her from the right, you're allowed to get in and, and curse at her and do this. But if you criticize her from the left. 
you're completely barred from entry. That's correct. I wouldn't characterize it, though, as me getting at her from the left. And the reason I wouldn't say that is because I have a lot of followers who think all sorts of things. I right. have Republicans right. who love what I do. I have... I don't like that, like, the... Well, I mean, I think we can kind of have a universal truth here that, like, having an anti-war position is, is a left position. And like, I don't think so. I don't. I really don't think so. I think. I think it's a anti-war is anti-war, and I. I don't think it's a left okay. position. You know why? I think more of a libertarian. Like, it's. It's. I don't know. I don't think libertarian communists would like. I don't know. I think it's kind of like putting people first. Kind of like. I don't think it needs a label. I think anti-war is just labels are bad anyway. Anti- we don't want labels. I, yeah. I'll, I'll agree with you there. I'll agree it lo- you. It's just anti-war is just anti-war, and like that's what I'm saying. Like this, the, the reasons these videos go viral. <laughs> Is honestly a lot of the time the reason is the videos go viral is because like it's either goes it goes international like some of the like there was a Mexican communist dude who like shared one of my videos and that got like another three hundred thousand views, but it's people like Dan Bongino who is like prominent right wing guy, mm-hmm. and you know they throw in their own little thing in there like yeah because like with the last one with the New York Times one he said like. Yeah, the, you know, the Julian Assange thing. Yeah, and they were wrong about vaccines and they were wrong about COVID. And then, you know, then then he starts throwing in more right wing stuff, which I, I forgot. They were wrong about border security. You know? <laughs> like, 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 okay, all right, whatever, 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 right? But, you know, the point is, 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 is like, you know, there are some big shows on the left who shared it too, like Redacted is a big one, Jimmy Dore is a big one, but. There is something about it that I think transcends the party lines that everybody picks up on and realizes, like, this is more than just a political. This is a trying to survive position. And I think no matter who you are, you resonate with that. And I honestly, I respect that and I love it because what I think the message it sends is put aside your politics for a second. Realize we're on the verge of nuclear war. We all have one thing in common right now, which is we all want to survive. Let's go back to fighting each other after we get after. rid of the, <laughs> yeah. after we get rid of the threat of nuclear war. And I think that's successfully coming through. And also, there was another guy, not the Cuban guy who called her a piece of shit, but some guy who said, oh, "You know, forty one hundred forty million dollars to Ukraine that's coming out of my pension, my pension." That guy wasn't with me, but you know, that's like. That was just a, a genuine, honest guy who's like, fuck all this money to Ukraine, you know? Like, I like that a lot. And, and, and there, I, there, Was there a video of that? I yeah, some, somewhere. I, look, oh. I, there was footage of this thing that even I didn't see that I was like, whoa. I was so happy about that. And so th- this is another public message to AOC. Like, yeah, I'm going to keep coordinating this. But honestly, like, the people who are going to come to these town halls are going to be pissed off. Like it's it's good to see that like people are just going and being pissed off on their own accord. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. When you don't have to organize that, that's when it starts getting really bad. Yeah, exactly. Like that, and I was I was um, I'm I'm really happy about that actually. That I don't need to I didn't need to organize everybody who spoke there. Like she was with me. Mm-hmm. Clear war with Russia. We're sending hey, those F-16. people were not with me. This guy, I, I was, so this is something that Reef See, I was uh, I was about to say we like, called him the boo guy. <laughs> I, that's just, the, like, I just wanted to ask you. That's the number one AOC donor right there. He's given his <laughs> He's every got quarter. <laughs> but I want to point out actually, like I just realized, like there were people with signs in the back. I didn't even those people were not with me at all, and I'm yeah. so happy that they were there. Wow, I, I'm just realizing, like holy shit, like and they, I guess they, yeah, look, see, yeah, that wasn't even planned for them right? to hold the sign up. That's amazing. Stop like, funding Ukraine. They, yeah, they just decided to go with Rachel for this. Like, you see, wow, that's actually really great. Like, I, I didn't know they were going to. People are pissed. <laughs> I'm actually kind of speechless, actually, because, like, I didn't even see those signs. Like, 
Wow. Can't keep that's, hiding it forever. That's amazing. They're trying to control and, you're to it. It. and, and here's another thing. It's like you can tell. You can tell they hire people to boo the crowd. They definitely have a bunch of people in there that get the crowd like that. I mean, you have to give I mean it takes a lot like it takes a lot of balls to do this. I mean, I've been in these situations. It's like <clears throat> preparing yourself to get absolutely roasted by the entire room around you while like trying to like stay, you know, true to your principles stay and not, to like, your principles, like, yeah. You know, buy into like the environment. Um, it's only going to get worse for like, AOC. She probably won't be having too many more of these before her next election. Yeah. Wow. I have a question right now. That's Why the other reason. Don't you and the squad have the ability to tell their supporters not to vote for Biden unless he concedes or ended this war? Why won't you Great do question. it? Great question. That's a lot of money you are sending to Ukraine. And you're talking about you're, you're bringing money to your community? What about the war? She don't even want to answer the question. She draining. She is contributing to America's debt. You are contributing to America. You got a lot of blood on your hands, and you're gonna have to answer to God one day. You're gonna have to answer to God one day. Just. I love that line, by the way. Like we should be <laughs> talking that to all the politicians. Like you're gonna have to fucking. You're gonna have to answer. Yeah, but and you're gonna. Ha you're, I hope you fucking burn it. They out. sold themselves to. Because they sold anyway. themselves to it. Yeah. All that was all Rachel. I didn't. She she went on on that. Well, and all that girl. Was this Rachel or was Actually, this someone else? There was there there are two Rachels. So the previous okay. one you played was Rachel. This is the second Rachel. <laughs> okay. Okay. You keep you keep clapping and smiling. You're they're just pretending she's not even there. There's the hammer. You are not the truth. You are being brainwashed. I need y'all to wake the hell up if COVID-19 did not wake you up, then you are asleep. Why are you letting this lady rock yourself to sleep? Stop funding this Yeah, that I I that, that was that was my favorite. That was one of my favorite ones. Uh out of that one. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, uh, you got I, two Rachel. That's crazy. <laughs> we were talking about, like, what should she say? And I just thought, like, well, pose, pose a question. Like, pose an obvious question, which is, you know, this is something the squad can do. Don't endorse Biden unless... We're not he... even talking about Medicare. Like, <laughs> it's just not the war. <laughs> it's really not that crazy of a concept. Like, they're just not... Send weapons but, and F sixteen. We, we, yeah. We've been we've been pushing against this for like two years now, and it just it, the, the needle just keeps on going and going. And we, how many? It's just this 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 falling like domino effect where just like we just keep sending, you know, first it's F sixteens, then like Patriot missile systems, and we're it's just going to keep escalating to the point where they're they're we're not they're not going to have a way to turn back. And that's usually how it ends up. It's going to be to Afghanistan. Well, yeah, Belgorod last week, and so we'll see what happens. It's getting, All these splinter cells start waking up. Yeah, and then Jerry Nadler says he doesn't care if the F-16s are used to invade Russia. <laughs> like, this guy, look, it's everything is escalating. AOC is playing a role in it, whether she thinks so or not, because I have some indications that she mm -hmm. doesn't support Zelensky. Like, for example, when Zelensky came to the Capitol or to the Congress, and he testified she wasn't there, Bowman wasn't there, Rashida Saeed wasn't there, they didn't tweet about it, they were talking about other shit, they ignored it, right? That's not good enough. That's just like, you know, not being cool with it by omission. And so the fact that you can sit by and do nothing while this war continues to escalate and you have an authority as a congresswoman, why is it that Marjorie Taylor Greene is better than you on this issue? Why is it that Matt Gates is better than you on this issue? Right. The Thomas Massey, like there are Republicans yeah. who are better on this issue than you are. And this seems to just make the most sense for you to be on. You know why? Because the Democratic Party is the war party now. OK, that's really, they're the right really like party. That. Gentlemen, the Matrix is telling me I have to go because my phone's on four percent and I don't know where my charger is. So. All right. man. Thank you so right. much for joining us. It was good yeah. talking to you.
Anytime, anytime. Yeah, Invite me back for, on. Thanks for coming in and explain this out, man. I appreciate you. And listen, I appreciate listen, the work. Listen, listen. If you get a girlfriend, break up with her. Why? She's government mandated to get you out of politics, to get you out of the revolution. <laughs> Don't trust it. Okay? Don't believe anything. So, anyway. <laughs> All right. Take, take care, y'all. Appreciate y'all. you. Have a good night.